Hmm? Or even more. Or even more. Because God will not override a person's will with his own will. Why is that? And, and then Mike's going to pick me up at their airport and say, there's just something in here, something changed. He was just set up. Man, that was the easiest guy to lead back to the Holy Spirit. I've led thousands of people into the back to the Holy Spirit. Literally thousands of people. This guy, I mean, I'm amazed he made it back home. He came up out of the water. It's just, it's a wonderful thing. Process. Do not discount the process. You go share your faith with somebody, you're a soul winner. You share your faith. How many thousands of people have you shared your faith with? Another question? Yes, a question. I won't say thousands, but a lot. A lot. How many of them gave their heart to Jesus first time you talked to them? Uh, Son? 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 Yeah. Does that mean that all the rest of them are worthless? Of course not. No. So this is important. When you read, thank you. So can I pull my PowerPoint back up? Thank you. We'll see. All right, let's see if we can do it this way, and maybe you can get a little more of it. Baptized Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Yeah, but Simon the sorcerer saw something that was power on every one of them. Luke didn't have to say they were speaking in tongues because he's already set up the lens in chapter 1 and 2 for us to understand exactly what's happening in this situation. Acts chapter 10, the Spirit comes on the Gentile Christians in the Decapolis. And who set the stage for that? The demoniac of Gadara, who is no longer a demoniac, gets delivered and goes and preaches the good news from there. So we keep asking. You can't see it at the bottom of the screen, I'm sorry. But at the bottom it says, keep asking, how does this impact what we understand about evangelism in the first century? How does this impact what we understand about evangelism in the first century? It's for everybody. It's for everybody. It came to the Jews first because they had a covenant with God. But in actuality, the Jews were supposed to be doing this all along. I'm going to be very careful here. Just hold on to don't don't forget it. I'm going to be very careful here. But the Jews were ordained by God to be a priesthood people that welcomed all the nations into Zion. The psalmist says the nations are going to stream in design. That's what the Jews were called to do, were to be to open up. But what did they do? They took all of the But there, anywhere but that. Why? Because that's scandalous to us. And he runs, and you know the story. 
prepares a great fish, swallows him up. Uh, he says, well, you never explained it to me this way before. I will go. He gets spit up on the beach, and he preaches to Nineveh. Is he happy about it? No. He doesn't want to preach to him still, even after he's been in the, in the belly of a, of a whale. Why? Because he knows God will forgive them. And his prejudice doesn't want God's forgiveness to reach these filthy Gentiles. Mm. The whole story of Jonah is a picture of the Jewish nation called to reach the nations, but they wouldn't do it because they took that covenant and that relationship with God as a unique thing that nobody else could get. Now, you know what? I'm going to say something a little hard here. My name is Kerry. I'm your friend. We're doing the same thing again. In the church today, we've built the whole church system for our comfort so we can have a good weekend experience with God. And we live the rest of our life as if. in the shape of the Roman Senate building and we build a platform up at the top and only a few guys get to do the speaking in the ministry and you know the dark ages that came from that no one could lay hands on the sick but the priest nobody could administer communion but the priest nobody could prophesy if that were happening but the priest nobody could preach the gospel but the priest the ministry was wrestled out of the hands of the church and turned into a professional priesthood. And we say, oh, my gosh, how did that ever happen? But look around. Yeah. We're way too quick to turn it all back over to the professional to do all the preaching, all the laying hands on. And we'll go to the conference center. And, Woo, they got the gifts. Woo, they got the power. No, you've got the power. You've got the gifts. Everybody in the place has got the gifts. And the design from first century to 21st century is for every one of us to be priests unto our world. Bringing them in. Come on. Come on. God's not holding your sin against you. He's not counting up against your against you, your sins. He's canceled them in the cross. That means the way is open. The only thing keeping you from the father is your wrong thinking about him. You think he. I think the other part of it is just true statement. <laughs> but Jesus is playing seven level chess and the rest of us are playing checkers. You know, the disciples are just trying to figure out how to stay with him for a day and not get too hungry. And Jesus is sowing seed into 20 years down the road, 200 years down the road, 2000 years down the road, and they don't get it. Let's see if we can get through this in the next 10 minutes. Determine what's normative. We've done that. Okay. Outstanding features. All right. Ungodly. God raised from the dead. Okay. Here's the message. Uh, I'll read you the last part here. Uh, Jesus is the And I'll upload this to you. I'll get you some other. But 
first look in in uh, in a link form, either in course announcements or in your hyperlinks. If that won't take it, then I'll email it to you. So you don't have to write all this down. You're going to get this. But these are the key components that are common in all five sermons in the book of Acts. And why would that be important to us? Why do we need to know what was in the sermons in the book of Acts? That's right. Because the message to them is the message to us and the message that we're to preach. It was foretold. This didn't happen overnight. We've got, we've got uh, validity. What am I trying to say? Verification through history. It's fulfilling history. Credited by God with miracles. He was doing what only God could do. Ungodly men killed him. We put him on the cross. Don't blame the Romans. Don't blame the Jews. It was all of us. Right? We're all guilty. Ungodly men killed him. God raised him from the dead. He's exalted to the right hand of the Father. So repent and be baptized. That last one is Acts 2, 38, 39. Those are the core messages. Outstanding features. We've just mentioned the kerygma is the message. When the word is from acts of the Holy Spirit, but because he's ministering through his apostles, it's calling that Holy Spirit is the active ingredient to transformation in the Jerusalem Council of Gentile Acceptance, Acts 15, where they say, Okay, we get it. Everybody gets in. So the church model, we have to we have to build into this idea of the perichoresis or the triune God. If we don't understand that the church is the model in the earth of what's going on in heaven. Then we turn Christianity into this religious mimicking with no power. Take some cracker and grape juice because that's what we're supposed to do the first Sunday of every month. But we don't expect There should be a receiving of divine healing power, both for our bodies and for the body, for relationship. But quite often, we just get through it as fast as we can, go to the next song. We've had a little grape juice, we've had a little cracker, and we didn't expect anything to happen. Oh, man, would I like to take you into Malachi? What's in Malachi? Well, the whole book of Malachi is about a people who were in covenant with God, but they didn't think it did any good to serve God anymore. They're tithing, but nothing's happening. They go to church and worship, but nothing happens. So they're not really expecting anything to happen anymore. So now they're giving him their one-eyed chickens for their tithe. Now they're giving him their least instead of their best. Why? Because they don't expect anything to happen anyway. <laughs> okay same gifts same spirit the warfare 
is real. Hell cannot withstand it. And here's, here's a key I want you to catch right here it's at the bottom, but it's huge. Everybody say huge. <laughs> it's huge. We have a mindset now that if we build it, they'll come. They didn't do that in the book of Acts. What we see in the book of Acts is they just went to one another, told their stories, and the same thing happened again. I'm telling you, Jesus came and healed me. He did? Will he do it for me? Yes, right here, right now. Boom. Testimony, spirit of promise. Healed one by one by one. Did they run build buildings? No. They met in homes. They met in caves. They met in temple courts. They met wherever they were. Why? Because they didn't have this idea that if you build a structure, people will come to the structure. That's called form and fill. We build the form, and then we pour the concrete in it. It's not the church. In the book of Acts, what you see is fill and then form. Fill and then form. Acts chapter 6 is about Fill, 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 fill the church with his spirit, with his word, and the church is being filled and it's multiplying, and they're not overly concerned with buildings for that. They'll find homes, they'll find places. Eventually, they've got to build some places, but that's not the priority. Okay, this is a real key point for this class. This is a key point because this is one of those places where when you look at what's going on in the first century, and then you look at what's going on in the 21st century, something doesn't look the same. And, and I'm not trying to slander or throw mud or anything like that. I'm, I'm a part of this. I've been in the ministry for over 40 years. I stand with, with this on my hands. We have exported so much of that to the nations of the world. Mm-hmm. And we've gotten the, the believers in nations all over the world to believe if you just build a great big building, everybody will show up. And so it's all about raising the money to build a big building so everybody will show up. You won't find that in the book of Acts anywhere. No problem. You won't find it. When I was ministering in the Philippines, 105 degrees, tropical. You talk about sweat city. I mean, anybody been in Houston, Miami? I mean, this was this this was way past that. And the church is meeting out in a field, but I can instantly tell you who the pastors are. And I told my friend, I said, those are the pastors. How do you know that? They would have only picked that up from American preachers. We export our culture more than the kingdom. And we wonder why they're struggling with a prosperity gospel problem in Nigeria and Africa. They're just preaching what they've seen us preach. This is why this class is critical. It's critical for us to go back and say, what did they have that changed the world? What did they have that changed the world? They understood, fill, and then form. 
okay, if we've got a problem, we've got all these Grecian women, they've, they've come from, from uh, the diaspora, they've resettled into Jerusalem, evidently they're not going back home, we're going to have to fix this problem. You see, the fix is a result of a problem of growth. You don't build something and hope it grows. You grow people and then you accommodate whatever growth the Lord provides. My, my pastor and my primary mentor is Dr. Jack Hayford. Dr. Jack Hayford pastored it. At the end of his ministry, he had about 10,000 people at the church on the way. It, it grew more than that, but he made this statement over and over again. You've probably heard it. He said, I never set out to grow a big church. It's never been my intention to grow a big church. My goal from the Lord Jesus has been to grow big people. He says, but when the growth happens, the Lord has told me to accommodate what he blesses. So 10,000 people come. You got to find buildings, room, some way for 10,000 people. We've got set ways that we do that. There's a lot of different ways. But this you'll see in Acts 6, Acts 13, Acts 15. It's a repeat to help us to see something that is non-negotiable there in the book of Acts. It was not about setting up a religion. It was not about setting up an organizational structure or system. It was about getting people trans. power of well, receives a big word see the yeah. conclusion the clear implication is that we are to continue in the ministry of jesus until he comes again we are acts 29 30 31 and however long that goes you and i are to be living that that means listen if luke gave us chapter one and chapter two as a lens through which to understand the rest you and i need to be living in the reality of the lens of acts chapter one and two not something different so if somebody reads the book of Acts and it's got 32 chapters in it now, and your name's in there, they read it. The last three chapters don't look like they were written by somebody else. Let's ask the Lord to do that. Can we do that? Father, would you just work with us? Would you fill us again today? Father, I want everything you have for me. I want everything you have for me. I want everything you have for me. I want you to fill me. Fill me today with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with everything you have. Lord, that there'll be an overflow in my life to touch others. Lord, may the organizational structure and the scaffolding come later. Lord, let us fill and touch our nations in Jesus' name. We bless you that that's on your heart. We know that's what you're up to. We just want to partner with you in it. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right. Make sure you signed in before you leave. If you didn't sign in on the back, make sure you sign in before you leave. Sure. Let me just, just need to turn this off.